myelofibrosis is characterized by first typical features. I would say generally the patient with myelofibrosis is a sick patient because he has symptoms of weight loss, splenic pain, bone pain, night sweat, lack of energy, severe fatigue, and at times anemia. As far as laboratory findings, the typical findings of myelofibrosis are a typical blood picture of anemia, although not all patients have anemia, the appearance of immature red and white cells in the blood, a phenomenon known as leukoerythroblastic reaction. Simply, it implies immature cells of the red series and of the white series showing up in the blood where normally they are not supposed to show up. Uh, abnormally appearing red cells in the blood is also part of the feature of this disease. This taken together with an enlarged spleen and symptoms are fairly typical um, for the diagnosis of this condition. Add to this the presence of big spleen and that makes the diagnosis fairly common. To have a complete diagnosis, patients require to have a bone marrow test. In other words, a bone marrow biopsy. Unlike polycythemia vera and essential thrombocytemia, the bone marrow typically shows the development of excessive fiber in the bone marrow, known as fibrosis. We tend to grade the fiber development by a scoring known as the MF scoring. And while patients with essential thrombocytemia and polycythemia tend to have no, fi no fibrosis at all, or at the most, a stage known as MF1, patients with myelofibrosis have more extensive fibrosis, ranging from MF2 to MF3. Typically, it implies the development of reticulin fibers in the bone marrow, and when the fibrosis is more advanced, reticulin fiber is replaced by collagen fibers, and sometimes in the very advanced disease, even new bone formation. There are typical uh, molecular markers for the myeloproliferative neoplasia. Collectively, for the three disease uh, conditions that I repeat mentioning, essential thrombocytemia, polycythemia vera, myelofibrosis, and maybe also we should mention the prefibrotic uh, myelofibrosis, there are very common mutations. The most common one is mutation in the JAK2 gene, a mutation known as V617F, um, and in some patients it can be a mutation in exon 12 of the JAK2 gene. Uh, this particular mutation is extremely common in polycythemia vera and may be present up to 98% of the patient with polycythemia vera. Other mutations include a MIPL, MPL mutation, and a third mutation is a mutation in a gene known as skull reticulin. In conditions such as essential thrombocytemia and myelofibrosis, the mutations of skull reticulin and MIPL are present, whereas they are very uncommon in polycythemia vera. So that allows a nice distinction uh, as far as the mutation profile in the three conditions. Additional mutation on top of this, let's call this mutation founder mutations. And they are essentially mutually exclusive, which means a patient that has a mutation in JAK2 is not going to have a mutation in MIPL or in CAL reticulin. In addition to those mutations, when we do more extensive studies uh, of uh, DNA analysis, especially with what we call next-gen sequencing, we have identified repeat mutations in genes such as ASXL2 and so forth. 
uh, which may have prognostic significance in the course of disease progression. We, we stated that myelofibrosis is an uncommon disease. Um, it actually, there are not even very accurate numbers of how many patients are diagnosed every year with this condition in the US. It can be as few as 1,500 and as many as four or 5,000. But the prevalence of patients alive with myelofibrosis um, represent a much higher number um, because the disease is chronic in nature and some people can live a long time with this disease. So the prevalence of the disease is long, is probably ranges in a significant thousands of patients with this condition. It's very possible that some patients go undiagnosed with this condition. So it's important uh, to emphasize the characteristics of this disease and the fact that there is very extensive differential diagnosis. The presence of fiber in the bone marrow is in and by itself not sufficient to call it myelofibrosis. Fiber in the bone marrow can be secondary to inflammatory condition, can be secondary to other malignancies, can be secondary to leukemias, myelodysplastic syndrome, and so forth. So the diagnosis of myelofibrosis requires the molecular testing, the presence of splenomegaly, the abnormal blood features, and the abnormal clinical features in order to come up with the diagnosis. Granted, this is a relatively rare disease, and uh, personally, I prefer that this disease be managed in major centers, but because of availability of established treatment for this disease, it should be a basis for exchange between practicing physicians and academic centers.